Hello, everyone. I'm Varun Jain, and on behalf of the Communications Committee of the ASMBS, welcome to another Sword Spotlight. Today, I'm joined by Professor Ralph Peterly. This is a very important uh, and pertinent aspect, especially with the increasing number of sleep gastrectomies, especially that we see here in the United States. What was your motivation to study this topic? Well, according to our randomized trial, the ASM BOSS trial, comparing sleep and bypass, we had at five years, 32% of patients uh, that did not suffer from GERD prior to surgery had the de novo um, uh, GERD symptoms, and only 25% experienced the remission of their previous GERD symptoms. But we also saw 10% of GERD in the bypass patients. So another question was there was retrospective studies describing a very high rate of Barrett's esophagus up to 19%. And so we wanted to know what is the rate of Barrett's of the bypass, not only of the sleeve, in a clinical cohort, perspective cohort, comparing sleeve and bypass using not only symptoms, but also questionnaires, endoscopic and functional investigations. Excellent. So what was the crux of your finding? First of all, I think we found much fewer Barrett's, de novo Barrett's in both procedures. So it was only 3.6% off the sleeve uh, after a median of seven years and 1.2 de novo Barrett's off the bypass. But we did see a higher incidence of reflux symptoms in and PPI use off the sleeve, like 20, uh, 51 versus 20%, that's more than twice as much, and also more frequent and especially much more severe uh, reflux as a vagitis in the uh, uh, sleeve patients, and also more pathologic acid exposure. Got it. um, it's definitely something we are seeing here more and more, where more people who have had sleeve gastrectomies are requiring revisions to a bypass for refractory, medically refractory reflux. Do you think any of this information or anything else might help us select patients better with regards to reflux or risk of developing reflux? Well, it seems like if you have preoperative severe reflux, then you will you have a much higher chance of having reflux after surgery, after sleeve gastrectomy. But uh, we also analyze right now the 10-year results of our uh, SMBOS trial, and there we can just say that we had a much higher conversion rate uh, of the sleeve gastrectomy, not only for uh, insufficient weight loss, so weight regain, but also in for, for GERD or the combination of both. So this euphoria that exists uh, in many countries that prefer sleeve over bypass will probably be a bit more maybe conservative about the liberal use of sleeves maybe. Yeah. But I mean, we are happy that we have both operations. I'm not saying right. anything bad about a sleeve. Absolutely. But I think if you have this acid exposure, and if you have so many reflux as a vagitis in the long run, I mean, what happens 20 years down the road? And especially, I know that in the United States, adolescents are being treated mainly having a sleeve. And that may be something to think about. Absolutely. Excellent point. Well, anything else about the study that you would like to highlight for the viewers or the readership that you think may not necessarily be as apparent just in the text? Well, I mean, it, the discussion on how do you define a Barrett? I mean, there are different countries having different definitions. If you make random biopsies or if you just take a, a columnar type of uh, epithelium in the uh, lower esophagus or if you want to have uh, intestinal metaplasia, and if you have the strict definition by the PROC classification, then you will have a much lower incidence of Barrett's esophagus. So I think we, we should be careful not comparing apples and oranges in that respect. But then the question remains, how, do we have to, uh, at what point, at uh, what time will we have to make routine endoscopic uh, con uh, controls because half of our patients with severe uh, findings did not have some symptoms. So you cannot just follow the patients and uh, do these investigations if they have symptoms, because you will you will probably lose some of the main uh, findings if you don't do it like five or 10 years after the sleeve. Right. 
Well, all those are excellent, excellent points. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Peter Lee, uh, for coordinating this time and joining us from Central Europe today. We really appreciate it. Pleasure was mine. Thank you very much.